Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a great week. In today's live class, we are looking at a task two writing example and we're focusing on structure of a band nine essay. This is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch and I will host an all chat class in 90 minutes focusing on the reading section. While we wait for some of our members and viewers to join up, uh, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS help, check us out at aehelp.com and join the premium package there. We have over 100 hours of HD video lessons for all sections of the exam, as well as original practice tests and a fully interactive course for your phone, tablet, and PC. For general IELTS, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's general IELTS help.com. Again, we have loads of materials there for you also. Hi, Hamant. Good evening to you. It's still the afternoon for me here, at least for the next four and a half hours. Uh, students are websites. They look like this. This is the academic version here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join the premium package. Do yourself a favor. Get materials and strategies that will definitely help you to get the maximum score on your exam. This is the general version of the website with the green background. Click that big red button to join us there. Hi, Jaspreet. Nice to see more members coming into the class. Students, uh, you can download our apps, link them to your web accounts, search for Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help on the Google Play and Apple App Stores. If you have questions about our products or the exam, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Hi, Yura. Hi, Preeti. Nice to have you in the class. Our books are available, our exam books on Amazon. Look for AE Helps Academic IELTS and GE Helps General IELTS. You can purchase those books in paperback or electronic copies. Uh, again, task two today, followed by reading. Tomorrow we will continue with this task two, and also I will host a task one class for the all chat class, and then we'll finish the week with some speaking part two and speaking part three. Students, let's get into today's topic. So this is uh, task two writing. Uh, this question could come up on your academic or on your general exam. So it doesn't really matter which one you're sitting for. Uh, the uh, task two question is very similar between the two exams. Sometimes the topics are a little bit more academic for the academic exam, but the concept is the same you're writing, um, what kind of essay? So, Ivan, Ferdov, Zarjvir, what type of essay is task two? Uh, I think it's good to review this every now and then. I know some of you already know this, but it's a good idea to, to review these concepts sometimes. So task two, there's really only four types of writing or essays in uh, languages. Uh, and uh, this essay belongs to which group? What type of essay is this? Task two in the IELTS is a, it's not called an opinion essay, Yvonne. There's a different word. It's good to use the technical word in this case. You're close. <laughs> opinion is almost the perfect synonym for this type of essay, but we don't call it an opinion. That's right, Regver, we call it a persuasive essay. The goal of this essay is to persuade or convince your reader of a position or argument. Okay, and there are a lot of subcategories, students. So, argument essay, advantage, disadvantage type essay. Uh, which outweighs which. So there's lots of different types, argument, counter-argument, essay. There's a lot of different types 
of persuasive essays. But persuasive essays is this category of essay where we want to convince our reader. Why is that important to remember? Because that dictates the language that you use. Okay, hi, Kesey, long time no see. Good to have you in the class. Hi, Hamant. So um, persuasive essays, the reason that it's important to know this is because this should dictate the style of language that you're using. Okay, so it is important to keep in mind that your persuasion should dictate or decide the type of vocabulary and grammar that you are using, okay? Why is this important for the IELTS and for university and for work and jobs? Because that's what life is about. Life is often about us coming up with an opinion or a position and convincing our audience uh, about that position, okay? One of the common mistakes that I see is students are weak, okay, in their opinion. So keep this in mind. In order to get band seven or higher, especially on the academic IELTS, the examiners are looking at the coherence and strength of your argument. Okay, does that make sense, students? Hi, Ravindra, welcome aboard to our group of members. Um, so does that make sense, students? Uh, in the IELTS exam, above band seven or seven uh, or higher, the examiners are not just looking at, or is your spelling accurate, or is your grammar accurate, is your vocabulary accurate? That should be almost perfect. But they're actually looking at the strength of your argument. Okay, so how good of a job do you do to convince your reader of your idea? Okay, all right, just read. Hopefully it turns out nice, that pasta. So you have to be careful, okay? So... You must be careful to avoid weak and ambiguous arguments, okay? Uh, these are too often common uh, for student responses, such as it depends or there are both advantages and disadvantages. Okay. Now here's an important one. In most cases, you should take one position in the argument. Okay, somewhere along the way, some uh, IELTS teachers who aren't necessarily well-trained in uh, writing persuasive essays, started teaching students to write that, well, you can write the first paragraph about the advantages, the second one about disadvantages, and then kind of make a position. And that creates a lot of these weak essays where the reader's kind of like, okay, so this is good, that is good, this is okay, that's okay, neither is better than the other, and that's that. When a reader reads this kind of essay, they feel like they wasted their time. They feel like they didn't really get anything from that five or 10 minutes reading the essay. So you should take a position. It's very rare that you uh, sit on the fence. Does that make sense? So only questions that ask you to discuss both sides should you discuss both sides, okay? Most essays will not ask you to discuss both sides. If the essay question is not asking you to discuss both sides, you should not discuss both sides, especially in a short 250, 300 word essay, okay? Thanks, Kesey, thanks, Rajveer, for confirming that. It's really important. It is one of the most common mistakes, and it's one of the fastest ways for a lot of students to improve their task two score is just simply to make a better argument to make a stronger argument.
Okay. All right. Let's get back to the question. I really wanted to emphasize that because I'm finding myself reading too many essays with weak arguments that could get higher band scores. All right. So uh, let's uh, let's read this question now carefully, and then we'll work through the planning stage and get the introduction done. So read with me. IELTS task two writing. You should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Many people believe that uh, people should eat more vegetables and less meat. Others disagree. Uh, what do you believe and why? Um, let's change one of these people to individuals. So support your opinion and give examples and explanations from your own experience. All right. So um, let's paraphrase this question so that we make sure we understand it and we know the uh, voice of the essay as well. So go ahead, members uh, and viewers as well. You can do this at home. Uh, paraphrase this question. Okay. So paraphrase this question. That helps you to collect vocabulary, get a clear idea of the question, and start thinking about your position. Okay, so let's do that together and then we'll compare the paraphrase. Paraphrase means rewrite this question in your own words. So state this another way. Okay, so All right, so here's my paraphrase. I'm guessing some of you are finishing up your own. Uh, let's look at the original again. Many individuals believe that people should eat more vegetables and less meat. Others disagree. What do you believe and why? Support your opinion and give examples and explanations from your own experience. Lots of people argue that individuals ought to consume more greens and less animal protein. However, there are those who refute this position. What is your opinion and why? Refute is another way to say disagree. I see just Pete, you just asked me that. So refute means to push back. So if somebody tells me something and I refute that idea, it means that I push it back towards them. Okay, so refute a kind of an easy way, Jaspreet, to remember refute is think about it like refuse, to refuse an idea. Okay, all right. And then I made sure to paraphrase the whole question, and that's a good idea in this case. Back up your ideas with samples and reasoning from your own past. So that has the same meaning as support your opinion and give examples and explanations from your own experience. Okay, a uh, quick question. Uh, what voice should this essay be? Um, all right, while you answer that, Hamant Sharma says it is argued that individuals consume, should consume more vegetables uh, over animal products, whereas a certain uh, population refutes 
this position. Good, Hamant. Uh, Hamant, you don't need the comma after whereas. That's just a smooth flowing continuous sentence. So no comma there. Okay. Rajvir says, many people argue that individuals should consume more vegetables and less um, animal products. Uh, however, others think the opposite. What is your position and explain? Rajvir, it's not animal food because that means we're eating like dog food, cat food, and uh, livestock food, which is kind of funny. Uh, so careful there. Um, animal food is what we would feed the animals. Okay. Uh, Ferdovs Nabiev says certain individuals ascertain that people have to consume more veggies instead of eating flesh. Um, yeah, flesh is a little bit odd uh, sounding for a native English speaker there. Uh, eating less meat. Uh, flesh is more of a medical term for Dobbs. So when we're dealing with flesh, we're usually using that word with humans or animals if you're talking to a veterinarian, but it's more of a medical context. Okay. I know that's what you learn, right? Understanding how to use these in context. Uh, Rajvir, I like how you finished your uh, paraphrasing. Support your position with explanations and examples from your life. Nice, Rajvir. So that gives you that clear idea that it's first person essay and Mahesh and Kisi and Yvonne all agree with you, Rajvir, that it's a first person essay. For Dobbs, it's definitely a first person essay. Uh, support your opinion and give examples and explanations from your own experience. That's very strongly um, a first person request. Okay. Kesey says certain individuals ascertain that eating more greens and less red and white meat um, is better. However, others disagree. Kesey, that first sentence is a sentence fragment. It's not complete. Another way to say it is it's an incomplete sentence. Okay. Uh, Preeti Sina says several people argue that they should consume more veggies and less uh, comestible. I don't know that word. However, others oppose this statement. What is your opinion and why? Yeah, I don't know that word comestible. Um, Preeti, I'll be honest, I've never seen it before or used it, so I can't give you feedback on that. Okay, uh, so what's the topic here? What is the topic? What are we talking about? What are we focusing on? So topic, please identify that and the controlling idea. So what are we discussing? What should this essay continuously focus on? What concept should it echo for the reader throughout so that they're crystal clear on what is being discussed? What are we talking about? We have a great group of members in the class today, so I should have some nice answers. And again, remember, when you're identifying the topic, focus to be as concise as possible. Okay, Rajvir says, food to be eaten by humans. Uh, Ruslan says, consuming food, benefits of vegetables. Uh, Kisi says, food. Uh, students, there's even um, one word. It's four letters. It's not food. Starts with a D, okay? Or you could say it another way with an N. Maybe the N word is even better. Preeti says, eat more vegetables and less meat. Um, Preeti, I think that's more, yeah, very good for Dobbs. Uh, that's almost more into the controlling idea. So for Dobbs says diet, right? So if I want to be as precise and concise as possible, so always practice to be as precise and concise as possible, okay? In this case, I would say human diet, okay? Or the other way you might say it is uh, human nutrition, right? Uh, nutrition is perhaps even more accurate than the word diet because nutrition reflects the concept of 
the value of food that we're putting into our body. So whether it's good or bad, are there vitamins, enzymes, and so on, right? So human nutrition. And the controlling idea, Hamant, is the benefits of consuming more vegetables and less meat. The benefits or deficits. Right? So that would be our uh, controlling idea. So we're talking about human nutrition or diet, and the controlling idea is the benefits or deficits of consuming more vegetables and less meat. That's what we're targeting here. Okay? So now, of course, we can go through the what, why, and how. And it's worth doing that. So sometimes students are like, well, it's really easy, right? Human diet, what is it? Um, but let's go through this just for fun, just so you can see, okay? A lot of times, and this is a little tip here, okay? Uh, do not assume that because a topic seems straightforward, you automatically can think of all the necessary information without going through uh, the steps of critical thinking. I'll give you a good example for this in just a second, okay, students? So wait for me here. Um, what, why, how, okay? Uh, I'm sure many of you uh, will agree with this, and I'll add this here actually to this note. Uh, think of how many times your math teacher warned you to go through all of the steps in the equation and show your work. Okay. Does that ring a bell uh, for many of you? So uh, when you're learning math in school and you have an equation like um, uh, x plus y equals uh, 4 times uh, 2 uh, plus um, y, something like that. Uh, so I'm just coming up with some maybe doesn't even make sense. But, and then students will say, oh, okay, x has to equal 10 right? Uh, without showing their work. And then the math teacher says, eh, it looks easy, but you really need to go through the steps and show your work. And then oftentimes we're like, oh yeah, okay. Uh, so how many of you have had that experience? Rajveer says every time. Um, all right, Rajveer. Well, <laughs> in English and in logic, in what the Greeks referred to as rhetoric or argument, it's the same. You have to go through a certain number of steps, even when the topic might seem super simple, okay? So reasoning and arguing follows a lot of the same types of logic as mathematics. And we tend to assume that we're very familiar with certain topics even more than in math. And that's where we make a lot of mistakes in our arguments, okay? Yeah, just free, just run. I love your honesty, members. Me too, all the time. I always thought I could, oh yeah, I don't need to show my work here. I'll just jump ahead and write the answer. And then, of course, I got many of those answers wrong. So uh, same thing when you are making a verbal argument, especially when you're writing, okay? It's often important, even in spoken presentation, to go through steps of logic in your head. When you're writing, it's especially important, okay? So show your work. So uh, let's go through these, okay? So question number one, uh, what is human nutrition? So what would you say that is? So let's go through these. What is human nutrition? 
And then, of course, question two is, why do humans eat? And question three would be, how do we eat? Or how do we maintain our nutritional needs? Okay, so let's go through these three questions. So what is human nutrition? Uh, so Ivan says the ration of food for a day. Okay. Uh, Heman says fuel for life. Uh, Heman, when you're doing this, don't um, use abstract or analogous concepts. Okay. Uh, we put fuel in a car. I kind of get what you're saying, Heman, but be even more specific. So Preeti says proteins, vitamins, minerals, fat um, that we put into our bodies, right? So finish the idea. Yura says proteins, vitamins, fats. Okay. Uh, Sam uh, Katnori says, in my opinion, human nutrition is the diet that we take. Okay. Uh, Sam says to take energy from food. Let's go step by step here. Okay. Um, it seems to me like you're jumping around a little bit, students. So uh, what is human nutrition? The substances especially food and liquids that we put into our body, okay? So again, you're always uh, focusing on uh, being concise, as concise and as precise as possible. So it's the substances, especially food and liquids that we put into our body, okay? Uh, why do I say um, foods and liquids? Some people might say, well, that's everything. But don't forget, people will inhale smoke. Some people smoke cigarettes, for example. And that could even be considered a part of the nutrition. But I'm not going to go into that much detail. Okay. So let's, let's not jump to the um, parts of nutrition yet, like proteins and acids and carbohydrates, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, so Ruslan says it's the elements that supply humans with energy and life that we consume. Okay. All right. Uh, why do humans eat? Number two, give me some really good answers for this one. I saw some people answer. So to keep our body in good health, to live and survive. So to live, survive. health. I'm surprised that I haven't seen one come up yet for this. Um, Just Quran says for energy. There's still one missing. And this is where I want to show you the importance of critical thinking, even when it appears to be simple. Okay. There's one key answer to question two that I haven't seen yet. Very good, Kali Toon. So Kali Toon's like, oh yeah, of course, wait a second, let's visualize this, guys. Are we really eating all those chocolates and candies for survival? <laughs> eh, arguably not, right? So for satisfaction. So we also eat for pleasure, right? Okay always uh, think outside of the box, right? Arguably, a lot of human nutrition in today's world is focusing not on survival, but on pleasure, okay? And I bet that many of you are now thinking, yeah, wait a second, that could be quite an important concept when we're comparing eating meat and vegetables. Would you agree with me on that, members? So identifying this answer for why do humans eat for pleasure is an important concept for this uh, essay question. Do you agree with me? Can you, so here, what I want you to think about is the IELTS examiner who gets 200 essays to mark. Okay. 
So that IELTS examiner is sitting there. They have, they have a pile of essays like this on their desk, and they have to mark them, okay? And they're reading one after the next after the next. Uh, think about how much better an essay will read that identifies pleasure as part of the idea of eating, especially eating meat and vegetables, okay? That student has a huge advantage to get a higher band score than those students that didn't identify that component, okay? And I can see Ruslan, Jaspreet, Rajvir, uh, Saminder, Herman, and Kisi that you're all there, okay? So this is why we go through what's called the order of operations in math, right? So going through all of the steps showing our work, okay? So we eat for these reasons. Now, how do we maintain our nutritional needs? So what do we do, okay? In practice, yeah, of course, Yvonne, exactly. And I think that's what everybody else was thinking too. Yeah, we're eating meat a lot of the time, not because we need to, but because of the pleasure, the sensation that it gives us to eat meat, right? Meat is very sweet and uh, salty at the same time. It's a very pleasurable sensation to eat a steak or a grilled chicken, okay? So how do we maintain our nutritional needs? What do we do to eat every day. <laughs> yeah, Ruslan, I bet. Yeah, I apologize in advance for all those students who are getting really hungry <laughs> during this lesson. That will happen, okay? So Sam says, by eating a balanced diet for healthy life. Fredjavir says, by eating vegetables, meat. Um, Yura says, by ingesting vitamins uh, and uh, doing work or... Sure, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so by putting food into our mouths, um, but how do, we, um, how do we procure our nutrition? So do we do it like our forefathers uh, thousands of years ago? We uh, go out into the field with a spear and we hunt down our mammoth or we find a bush full of berries and pluck all those berries off the bush and collect them in our basket or somewhere else and then take them back to our tent or our cave. So how do we actually procure our nutrition? Yeah, so Haman says most of us buy our food from markets. Yeah, so we buy our food from markets or restaurants. Okay, if it's the restaurants, then it's already prepared, right? Um, we also prepare dishes at home. Sometimes we produce food at home in the garden, right? Then we eat, okay? So that's what's important here. We work, yeah, Preeti, very good. So Preeti uh, Sina says, we work, we earn money, we buy it, we eat it. Good, Preeti, fantastic. That's exactly what we do. Colored Tune says from butcher shops, we get our meat. Great. All right. So now we go on to the controlling ideas, okay? So the controlling elements. So for the controlling ideas, Uh, we want to ask some important questions here. So now we've gone through these important basic steps of uh, human nutrition. Now we need to go through the controlling ideas. Uh, what is the right question? So sometimes answering the questions, of course, is not too bad. We get the right ideas. The more challenging part of arguing is to identify the right questions. Right? So um, what is the right question? There are a couple that we can start with here. Uh, so give me your suggestions. What do you think is the right question uh, for the controlling idea? And again, be as concise and as accurate as possible. OK. 
Okay, we gotta get a move on students, let's get to work. So what's the right question? What's the right question here? How much nutrition, so Ruslan says, how much nutrition is in veggies and meat? Preeti says eating vegetables is more healthy than having meat. Kisi says the benefits of eating lots of vegetables. Almost, Kisi. Almost. You're the closest so far. Okay. Anybody else? So I would start with question. What are the benefits? And again, simplify it. When you have the right question, students, your mind will know. Okay. When you have the right question, your mind goes, oh, yeah, of course. That's the right question, okay? And so, um, it's usually what? So the first question usually starts with what? Okay. Uh, Ruslan, you should choose a side, but only after you've thought about both sides, right? So in this case, it's, it's I think, fairly easy to choose the sides of vegetables. Most of us know that we should eat more vegetables. Um, but you should still go through these steps. So what are the benefits of eating more vegetables? And less meat. Okay. That is the right question. So what are the benefits of eating more vegetables and less meat? What's the answer? Okay, and give me your ideas here. So what's the benefit? Now, hint, hint, think outside the box. Okay, so what are the benefits of eating more vegetables and less meat? Give me your answers. Whatever comes to mind, just get them out. As soon as you get the... Um, the okay so Yvonne says reduced weight um that might be the there we go Rajveer says easy digestion so yeah easier digestion which results in losing weight okay all right Kalatoon says we can maintain our physical posture, but Kalatoon, I'm not sure what that means, okay? Um, keep your thoughts simple, students. Simple thoughts are beautiful, and they lead to high-band essays. So Rajveer has the best one so far with easy digestion. Okay, Haman says a uh, lower chance of inheriting viral infections from animals. Uh, Hamant, let's simplify that, okay? So less contaminants. Okay, uh, contaminants are, uh, for example, bacteria or virus like uh, bird flu, uh, mad cow disease, all of those different illnesses, salmonella that happens with chicken consumption. Um, but contaminants like mercury, hormones, and so on, that's also often found in meat today, right? Uh, Kisi says cheap and easy to get. Maybe it's arguable that vegetables can be even more expensive, but sure. Okay, so easier digestion, less contaminants, uh, cheap. Yeah. Uh, Preeti says like heart attack. Okay, um, lower cholesterol, right? I have never written that word, I don't think. But lower cholesterol, absolutely. Okay, so lower cholesterol also. Now, um, students, whenever you're thinking about your arguments, here's a really good tip, okay, for your exam. So always think of individuals and society as well, okay? So whenever you're dealing with, or for most topics, uh, when you're dealing with these advantage, disadvantage type questions, think about the individual, 
Okay, and then think about society because humans, we are individuals and we're also pieces of that greater mechanism that we call our society, our city, our country, our continent, and of course the entire planet, right? Okay, and don't get carried away with your thoughts. Don't get emotional. Don't get all, you know, excited about, oh, I'm a vegetarian, so I'm going to argue this and that. Stay with the program. So just like in math, stay with the program. Hi, Karan. Welcome aboard to our group of members. Okay. So, so far, what are the benefits of eating more vegetables? Less meat, easier digestion, less contaminants, cheaper, lower cholesterol diet. Preeti, those are the results. Life expectancy can increase. Okay. Any benefits for society? So any benefits for society? Yeah, so Himan says creates more efficient um, nutrition or nutritional chains for humans. Yeah, you're kind of on the right track, Himan, but you want to simplify that, okay? You want to simplify that, okay? So... If you're getting really fancy and you want to get a band nine essay, then you should consider uh, less demand on natural resources. Okay, so meat production is extremely costly for uh, humans. Um, the amount of resources needed for uh, just a few cows can produce enough vegetables for a hundred more people. Okay. So it's not just animal protection, Kesey, but the actual, um, so I've, I've read in a couple different places that to produce one 10 ounce steak requires something like a thousand liters of water. Okay. Or even more. So keep that in mind. All right. So think outside the box. Okay. All right. Now, uh, next question is, why does eating more vegetables or veggies uh, than meat have these benefits for people? So why, okay? So why? Now I'm going to move us along here a little bit because I can see that we won't really get past the planning stage here today, but that's okay. Because the better planning we have, the better we can write tomorrow and the faster, right? So um, why does eating more veggies than meat have these benefits for humans? What do you think? So what could we say here? If somebody, if somebody says, well, why, why is it easier to digest? Okay, you're going to laugh. But if we had the same question and we were all dogs, okay, so we're all dogs, we would have some really different answers here. We would not have easier digestion as our answer here if we're all dogs or wolves or tigers. We would say, ooh, you're going to wreck your stomach. You're going to be in a lot of pain if you start eating a lot of veggies, right? So uh, it seems like it's intuitive, but you have to spell it out just like when you're doing math. So why can we answer that eating more vegetables helps our digestion, or it lowers cholesterol. Why can we say that for humans? Okay. What do you think? So Preeti says veggies are natural products that do not have heavy elements or heavy elements don't concentrate in vegetables as much, right? Um, Sam says we live healthier lives, have less instances of obesity. Sure, Sam, that's part of it. Why, why, Hamant, are veggies easier to digest for the human body than meats? What do you think? What's the simple answer here? Okay. The most simple, elegant essays with good English will get the highest band scores, guarantee you. Uh, and we'll get the highest scores in university as well, okay? So why? Uh, arguably, 
humans are primarily um, designed or evolved is a better word to eat vegetables and only a little meat okay so we're designed that way that's the most basic answer here just like our monkey friends the gorillas the chimpanzees uh, we do eat meat we do have teeth to eat meat and we can digest it by the way an animal that eats both meat and vegetables is called an omnivore okay but there are so there's um there's a really big misconception with omnivores so when you have a carnivore like a tiger it's clear that they eat meat and almost just meat right when you have a herbivore like a horse then uh, or a cow then it's clear that they eat just grass and just greens where the confusion happens is with omnivores okay omnivores are animals that eat both meat and plants okay there's a range here all right so a human eats like 95 percent is designed to eat 95 percent plants and maybe five percent meat i might even be over shooting it here versus a bear that's designed to eat i'm just coming up with these numbers but they're approximations 20 80 percent plants and 20 percent meat okay and you can kind of look at our teeth and look at the teeth of a bear and see these differences bears actually have a lot more of these sharp canine style teeth they consume more meat okay so but humans are primarily plant eaters okay all right um so let's uh let's ask the next question here before we go on uh, there's a very important question here students uh, remaining so we've asked two of three good questions for the controlling idea what are the benefits of eating more vegetables and less meat we gave some great answers then we asked what does eating more veggies than meat have uh, or why do these have uh, why does this have more benefits for humans or for people? So we have an answer there. Uh, and we need a third question here. That's really important. Yeah, Preeti, there's definitely, and Ruslan, there's definitely a range of meat and vegetable eaters around the world. But most humans in most parts of the world are designed to primarily eat vegetables and not meat okay so there's a lot more plant matter on the earth in all regions than meat okay uh, we have one more really important question remaining and you should not start the essay before asking and answering this question um, what is that question so if my first one was, what are the benefits of eating more vegetables and less meat? My second one was, why does eating more veggies than meat have these benefits? Then what should be my third one? Keep it simple. Conceptualize, visualize. We really need to ask and answer this one. Okay. Because this will be very subjective. Okay, very subjective. Uh, Rajvir says, how does eating more veggies than meat have these benefits? Yes. That's good. Okay. I agree, Rajvir. And there's another one that we need to ask here. Let's focus on this one, 
Okay, so let's focus on this one that I've just put up here. You are right. You are correct, Rajvir, that this how question is important, but this is another one that you have to think about. So how do we eat more veggies than meat? What does that mean? It's a subjective opinion. Okay, so this is a subjective opinion. And exactly because of what some of you said. So a couple of you said, well, in different parts of the world, that's a different idea, right? So you have to tell your reader what you actually mean by eating more vegetables and less meat. So let me hear it, members. I'm really curious about your answer for this, okay? Uh, what does it mean in your world, in your subjective view, to eat more vegetables and less meat, okay? Uh, just read in 30 minutes, we will have another class of uh, 40 minutes. We will have another class on reading. Okay. So answer this last question for me, students. What does that mean in your world? In my world, that means instead of eating meat every day, eating meat only once a week. Okay, and of course, replacing that dietary need with vegetables. So this is where you really want to be quantitative, okay, because your essay will have to show that for your reader. If you don't, it's going to be a very awkward essay. It will be difficult to interpret what you're actually trying to explain, right? So here I would say, instead of eating meat every day, eating meat only once a week, and replacing the dietary need of meat with veggies, right? So in the Western world, in Europe and in North America, it's very common to eat meat, not just once a day, but even several times a day. And instead of that, eating meat maybe just once every week, would be that eating less meat and more vegetables. Okay, um, members, uh, we're short on time here, so um, here's the homework. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little bit of homework today for tomorrow. Uh, please, and the more of you that do it, the better the class will be for tomorrow, so please write the introductory paragraph uh, for tomorrow. Okay, so for tomorrow's class, have the introductory paragraph ready. I'll do the same and then we'll go through it nice and quick. We'll reflect and then we'll focus more on the body paragraphs and the conclusion. Uh, Karan, I see that you're saying, you're saying the same. So eating meat once a week uh, where people can develop uh, enzymes that are not covered for ve by veggies. Yeah. Yeah, so Rajveer says once a month, okay? All right. Okay, students, so we'll stop there for today. Again, really important, write the introductory paragraph. Remember, hook, background, thesis, okay? Those are the three elements that we're looking for. And then uh, we'll look at our introductory paragraphs tomorrow and complete the rest of the essay. Uh, one of the most important points that I want to, again, reiterate from today's class is go through the steps of critical thinking. Just like your math teacher telling you to go through every step and show your work, that's what I'm telling you to do with these task two essays. Go through the steps, show your work, especially when you're practicing at home. Just pre, don't send the introduction anywhere, just have it ready for tomorrow's class, okay? And we'll share our hooks, background, and uh, thesis statements. Uh, students, viewers, this lesson again is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Please check us out there. Join our premium packages. And for uh, general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com and join our premium packages there. I'll be back in 30 minutes with some reading practice 
and strategy. You are most welcome. Great attendance in today's class. Nice participation. Hopefully I'll see most of you shortly. Bye for now.